Basketball traditionally favors players who are tall, explosive, can play above the rim, it's just the nature of the game. So without really understanding the ins and outs of finishing around the rim, it's tough for those who may not be super athletic, but don't worry, it's still very doable to be an amazing finisher without it. So first off, I wanna mention that none of these guys that I use as examples in this video are unathletic, but they're amazing at exhibiting the techniques that don't require your standard version of athleticism. Or in other words, being a super explosive high flyer, but they are amazing at exhibiting those techniques that don't require your standard version of athleticism to finish successfully at the rim. They don't need to be high flyers, even if they can actually get up there. So let's check out how you can finish at the rim without being one of those high flyers. So the first key is unpredictability. Obviously, if you're not playing above the rim and using brute force and raw athleticism to finish, you're gonna need to be a bit more unpredictable to throw off timing and keep those shot blockers guessing. So this can be jumping from further out when the defense is expecting another step or two before going up. This could be just not looking at the rim at all before you actually get into that finish, which limits telegraphing that layup beforehand. And this could even be slowing down for what I call a quicksand finish as you delay that last step and let that defender pass you. None of these require crazy athleticism, but they're more so based on the timing of the finish and never Never being too predictable with it. Next is creating contact, and this is mainly done on the ground before you even jump. By doing this in a controlled manner, you're able to essentially cancel out that defender's jump sometimes, even if they're taller and more athletic. And doing this before you leave the ground means that you don't even have to be the strongest in the world. It's more so about positioning. Even if this is on the way to the rim to secure an angle, being the one to initiate that contact and not wait for it to inevitably come to you is huge as a less athletic hooper. And even if you don't end up making that contact, sometimes just the threat of it or the angle you take to do so will get that defender to back off. And building off this, the next key is being comfortable with two foot finishes. Especially for contact finishes, going off two feet is vital because you're more stable. It's a stronger jump. So when that bump happens, you're far more prepared for it. Plus, even outside of contact finishes, you have far more options. You can stop and get into a pump fake or pivot work. You can change directions last second on your jump. You can position your body to shield that extension finish a bit more. And again, for less athletic players, this is necessary. Next one's a pretty intuitive one, which is just being comfortable with floaters. What's the best way to not challenge a tall athletic shot blocker? Stopping short, easy. Now, this isn't to say that floaters are easy. They're a very, very manageable way to get good quality finishes off without the stress of attacking a shot blocker with contact every time. So the key here is getting comfortable with everything, one foot, two foot, different release points, fading a bit on those floaters, etc. Next one here is being able to finish on the way down from your jump. This seems like a very nuanced tip, but it's massively important. Think about it. If you're crazy athletic, you can get up there and effortlessly finish at the top of your jump. But when you're not getting up as high to really create this space from your defender, you may have to wait further in your jump, which means laying that ball up when you're falling from your jump. Or even like here, as he's covering ground, if he finishes at the top of his jump, he's not at a great angle to find that backboard. So he waits till he's coming down. Now he has a better window or a better look of the backboard to finish with. Six is getting really good at protecting the ball. This goes for everyone, of course, but especially us athletic players, we have to get a bit more crafty. And also being at slower speeds, defense has more time to get a hand on the ball. So this is just a matter of positioning, whether it's cuffing it, swinging it overhead or holding it away kind of on a platter with one hand, just always being conscious of where defenders are and keeping it away. Then number seven kind of builds on this ball positioning idea with using the ball as bait. So since defenders are so often looking to block shots, we can position the ball so that defenders jump and or put themselves out of position. Simply raising that ball on the way to the bucket can sometimes get players up into the air and aiming for that wrong block point, which is huge because now we have a much larger window to finish. Then second to last one here is just touch, making this a huge focus in your training. If you're able to finish with any position, any release point, anywhere on the backboard, your options are open. You can go anywhere with the ball. Players are often stuck when there's good defense because they know they can only go one place with the ball. And they're not comfortable displaying touch to do that. So this will allow you to use that rim to protect the ball. This will allow you to extend outside of your frame, finish in weird positions, etc. And this takes time and creativity and actually challenging yourself, not just doing the mic and drill over and over again, to really develop the touch that's needed at high speeds. 
And then the last one here sounds obvious, but it's something we have to think about. And that's just getting past or in front of defenders more. One of the big things I see with players who don't really finish as well is that they're always finishing with the defender on their hip. They're not actually getting past. So if you can make a big effort to get a full advantage, create contact or create a good angle to get an easier position in front of a defender, this is huge. And again, being fast helps this, but it's not the only thing. It's also about angles and creativity because it's so much easier to finish when you have a defender behind you versus when they're on your hip really contesting that finish. So hopefully all these tips can be very applicable to you. A lot of these we train in our virtual academy programs, but I've also posted tons of YouTube videos about these as well. So let me know what you think about all these keys. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. See you next time.